So in this video, I want to talk about the world of Otamu games is tough for mobs volume two. Honestly, going from volume one, I talked a lot about what made me enjoy the anime, the light novels, and I don't want to go into too much of the same reason, like the same jargon that I went over. So of course, if you haven't watched that video, go check it out. But I talk about a lot of what drew me into the series, what I liked about it, and what's kept me going. Now, in this volume, I want to really talk about one of the things that's kind of made me also like the character, but I couldn't talk about it, of course, until I got to that part. And again, that's because anime, light novel, what's in the light novels, what's in the anime, do you watch the whole anime, then you know everything, but if you read the light novels, there's different components that you can only talk about, and you can't talk about the future, even if you may know about it. So there's always that kind of hard task that you have to do as a content creator when you do stuff like this, where you've watched the anime before, and then you go to the light novels. What I find most interesting about him is how much of an idiot he is and the ai i love that ai that robot thing is just mwah. even in the anime it's so funny like it's meant to be a robot that isn't meant to have emotions but that thing has more emotions honestly sometimes i think than the main protagonist so sometimes I think the main protagonist is more emotionless than the ai the ai has got some sass in it that i really love and it compliments him as well really does i absolutely love how much it compliments him but one of the things that i thought was very interesting is how he keeps doubting himself in believing in what he wants like it's very clear that he wants to be with those girls but he doesn't believe he deserves it because he sees them as beautiful charismatic charming they've got all this like this life going for them they deserve all of these things but even when he points out you know you deserve this guy this guy they're like no i don't like them they're you know terrible and it kind of does make me wonder from the game were they that terrible in the game i mean his comments alone aren't the best judgment but it does make me wonder if those characters were just that stupid in the game or if the if the actual world itself really brings out the stupidity in them because of the influence that's had by that girl and she's clearly chasing for those items which he's gonna have to somehow either get from her or yeah he's in a lot of trouble but as i was saying before he feels like he doesn't deserve them because if he knows who he is he knows what he's like he's very self-aware of his own personality defects and this is why I was hinting at the idea in the last volume review, but I wanted to talk about more here because this is where it really goes into, is him softening up, him changing as the story goes on. And I do feel like he does slightly change throughout these two volumes, that he starts to soften up, that he's not so arrogant, that he's more trying to be the villain to try and encourage people and the girls see the real side of him. But I also still think he is slowly starting to change. And you do notice that when he's trying to make the other princesses' lives a little bit better, which they're starting to like him a little bit more, they have more respect for him than anything. And I actually think the princes may end up kind of not falling in love with him, but respecting him enough that they might start to see the issues with her and maybe start to wake up to her. But it will be one of those where one or two of them will realize and the, the main prince will be the one that's just stupidly in love and he'll be the most dangerous one because he's the one that's got the power. I really love what the t story tries to do here and the fact that it, it plays with this whole game mechanics and everything. You've also got like the other empire as well and the war and honestly I think that if he wasn't transported to this alternative world and it was just her, they would all be dead. Because I think she's created a bunch of events and a rippling effect that's made things get out of control. And how far is this story going to go? Because I kind of look at this as like another Otamu game, uh, another Otamu game style story, where the main protagonist goes through the story and by the end of the first season, the story of the game is completed. Now there is an expansion to that game, but there's a lot of stuff that the main protagonist doesn't really know about. And I think that might end up happening where he might get to a point where the game is finished but the story keeps going on and things keep getting way out of control and that's where it's going to get really challenging for him and her because she's only got some basic knowledge, he's got way more knowledge but once the game 
ends from the sense of all these different events, all these different characters and new things start appearing that they don't know about, things are going to get chaotic. And I think that's a potential of volume two and on, well, well, volume three and onwards is where the story may start to deviate into other areas. I don't think it will happen straight away. I think you'll start seeing hints of that now. And I think maybe in the couple of volumes to come, you could say maybe hints at volume three and four, but more so after that, you're going to start, I think, start seeing things where the story is going to really start deviating away from the game, like the game itself. And he's going to be completely like freaking out. And that's where I think his character is going to develop the most because he's going to have to stop being so arrogant about his knowledge and he's going to actually have to start using his brain a little bit more from a strategical standpoint, charismatic. And I think that's going to push him to try and become a better person, which will allow those girls to fall in love with him even more and other people may start to respect him. My hope is that he does end up marrying both of them. I assume he would. Again, I do not want spoilers. I'm simply just speculating for future parts. But... I also think that him constantly doubting himself is what's also pushing them away and giving them conflicting emotions because I think also I thought it was funny with the main female character in the sense of who he's got love interest it's kind of confusing though but I try to make it as simple to understand but with the girl that he's got in love with him that's not the princess but the main love the main girl that you play as she is clearly in love with him obvious both of them are in love but she's so conflicted with her emotions because she thinks oh well is is he only interested in me because of my looks but then when he says no she's like oh well aren't i good enough good looking enough it's like you boxed him into a corner no matter what reply he gave he was gonna lose at that but i think it's just one of those situations where she's so conflicted because of the fact that so many people are emotionally manipulating her and because of that other his sister that's messing with the game it's making everything so chaotic in nature. He has a lot of self-doubt, and that's why I do think as time goes on, he will slowly start to change as a person. But the reality also is, is that he keeps getting promotions left, right, and center that he doesn't want. And I think he's just going to need to accept that at some point. But yeah, both girls like him. He's won their hearts. But I also think he's winning the respect of the guys as well, which I think is kind of a nice little interesting touch. Then you've got the Black Knight, you've got the, the Queen as well. She's quite, mmm, divine, let's just say that. Julius's mother. I definitely think that there's going to be some more stuff to do. But then she's married as well, so. And then there's the Butler. I absolutely love the Butler. I think he's one of the nice touches that kind of humanizes him, the main protagonist, because he can get way out of control. Then the butler comes in, and then he just calms down. He has such a deep respect for the butler, and that's what I think it is. He has a respect, and then he isn't so arrogant. Then you've also got the other girl, uh, Jilk's former fiance, uh, Cla 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 Claris, I think is how you pronounce it. I wouldn't say the whole name, it's a Clarice Flea, a Claire, uh, yeah, yeah, someone's gonna laugh at me in the comment section, but she's also a character I could see as a potential love interest, but I just, unless later on in the volumes they make her more interesting and make you want to like her more, I just mainly want the two main girls to win, then you've also got like the hideous, ugly uh, one, she kind of reminds me of the character from the gambling anime manga. She kind of looks like that with the little locks on her side and everything, and she's kind of like manipulating everything in the background and some of the fight scenes. It's just like, there's some really interesting characters that are good and bad that I feel like are going to play a long-term rippling effect on the story. And it's just, like I said, seeing his growth already in the first two volumes, but I think there's so much more for him to grow as a character because, like I said, he keeps doubting himself. He keeps thinking he doesn't deserve to be happy, and even though it's clear that he kind of likes these girls, but he doesn't want to be with them because he thinks, well, they're destined to be with someone else. And then, as the AI points out, he's no different than his sister. Doesn't say that directly, but I'm just using that for easeability. But he just says, yeah, you're no different than that other girl. She's manipulated the game to her advantage, and you've done the same. You just had this sense of, oh, well, I can't damage the main timeline, but you've already have. You've already done so much damage because you've taken all these major things away from her and so has the other character. Now, all you can do is try to make things as good as possible for yourself and others around you 
and whatever happens to her well that's her own problem and i think that's what's going to be going on in the main story from now on so again love the story love what it tries to do i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below what do you think of volumes one and two of of course the world of otamu games is tough for mobs if you like this video hit the like subscribe and i'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video